Um, as Robert said, I'm Stephen Phillips, so um, Director General at Invest Hong Kong. Um, our job in principle is very simple, it's to help the best international companies from all around the world, including mainland China, to set up and grow their business here in Hong Kong, via Hong Kong into the mainland and also into wider Asia. Um, we've got a team of about 90 people here in Hong Kong, um, 60 people around the rest of the world in 30 different locations. Um, and our job is simple, it's to facilitate, to try and help make things happen um, and help companies navigate the system here in Hong Kong. Bit of a misnomer, we don't invest what's we're called Invest Hong Kong, we've got no money, just to make that very clear. <laughs> Um, as Robert said, uh, my, my own background um, included doing a startup actually here in Hong Kong. So the, the subject of this evening is very close to my heart. Um, back in 99, 2000, when dot com boom was going to bust, um, I was doing a startup right here in Hong Kong, a really difficult time, um, and grew a business quite rapidly along with um, former colleagues in Hong Kong. Um, on the mainland, Taiwan, um, Malaysia, and then rapidly built it out across the whole region and into the Middle East. Um, so I've been there um, and done it, know how difficult it is, know what it's like to worry about meeting payroll. Um, so it's something that I really empathize with. Um, but I think the ecosystem here in Hong Kong has moved on considerably over the last 15 years or so. And I'm gonna touch on that um, in the next few minutes. Um, once I've done my spiel, um, we're actually going to have the real experts who are at the sharp end of doing business at the moment. And, and sorry, Alexis, I'm standing in your way so people can't see you. <laughs> most of all, what we really want this session to be is interactive. So at any point, if you want to chip in or ask questions, please do so. We don't want it to be um, a sort of bog standard presentation. So. Just to talk a little bit about the context. Um, obviously, as we're in Hong Kong, we're all very familiar with what makes Hong Kong a great place to do business. Um, but certainly, as we're going around the world, we need to remind people about how good the fundamental business environment here really is. So the world's freest economy, obviously a great international, vibrant city right at the very heart of Asia. So it's a great market in its own right, access to the mainland, access to wider Asia. Things like the low and simple tax regime, and I'll touch on um, some of the things that governments are doing on that front in a moment or two. Obviously, we've got great infrastructure. It's a really efficient and productive city to do business in. And obviously, a pool of very internationalized talent here in Hong Kong. So some of those fundamental things as you're going around as ambassadors for Hong Kong, do remind people about those things because they're not always as well understood as they could be. Moving to the sort of startup scene as we see it from Invest Hong Kong, um, we're seeing a very diverse range of startups and I'm talking particularly about those with an international flavor. And I think probably four really big areas of focus in FinTech, really buzzy space, smart cities, retail tech, health tech, and internet of things. But of course, there are businesses of every shape and size from every sector of the economy. But in terms of core areas where we're seeing most activity, those are probably the top five. In terms of the startup community, we've been doing a survey at Invest Hong Kong for the last few years to try and gauge how quickly the ecosystem is growing. Um, our latest survey for 2017 showed that there's 2,229, a very specific number, um, startups working in largely co-working spaces and accelerators in Hong Kong. So it's not a total um, accurate figure, but it gives a flavor um, of how many companies there are. Importantly, though, that's up almost 110% over five years. So the number of startups really growing very strongly. For the government's point of view, for society's point of view, really important in terms of job creation as well. So 6,320 employees in those startups in the survey, and that's up 165%. So the number of jobs growing much faster than the number of companies. That's great for the economy here. That's why the government really wants to support SMEs and the startup community. 
the co-working space and accelerator space, just as we're in now, um, is also really growing rapidly in Hong Kong. A great selection of venues for businesses to set up. And what's more exciting, and we don't actually put this in black and white, but it's how international the startup community in Hong Kong is. 37% of the startups in the survey have international co-founders. And that's really, really high on a global stage. And it just shows what an international city Hong Kong is, that melting pot of talent from all around the world, which can help businesses scale rapidly into multiple markets. So perhaps I can just talk a little bit about um, the sort of incubator and accelerator space, um, a very wide range of players from some of the publicly funded infrastructure, Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, Cyberport, through to um, commercial companies, Infinity, the automotive company, have got their own accelerator program in Hong Kong. So a, a really good, vibrant system. Um, and as I said, this really fast-growing co-working space um, network across the city. We think from a government point of view that this is really supported by an increasingly um, pro-innovation government policy environment um, and also regulatory environment. And later on, I'd really appreciate your frank feedback on areas where you think government can do more to help facilitate. Um, but if you read Carrie Lam's policy address, innovation and a commitment to innovation, technology and startups runs all the way through. Whether you're looking at the business stuff, whether you're looking at the education stuff, which is about training people, bringing people into the job market with the right skills, it's something that really weaves through the entirety of the policy address. And government is putting money where its mouth is. So in the budget, you'll have heard 50 billion Hong Kong dollars being put into the innovation agenda as a whole. Much of that going into the next development of the Science Park um, up on the border between Hong Kong and Shenzhen, the Lok Ma Chow Loop development. But 10 billion into program funding um, in four particular areas, in AI, robotics, fintech, smart cities, and in biotech. Um, also, a big commitment to the creative industries, a billion dollars set aside to support the creative industries, um, something again that runs through the policy address very strongly. In terms of practical steps, um, the government has introduced already a two-tiered profits tax, so particularly for young companies, um, with a reduction of the normal rate from 16.5% to 8.25% for the first 2 million Hong Kong dollars. So hopefully that just helps a little bit in those early stages of profitability. Um, also, later this year, the intention is to introduce a super deduction for R&D expenditure of 300% for the first 2 million Hong Kong dollars and then 200% thereafter. And that's to encourage fundamental R&D, basic R&D, to be done in Hong Kong and then commercialize. That's very competitive on an international basis. So for those of you who've got an R&D element to your business, think about using Hong Kong more and more for those activities. On the fintech side, um, I just highlight what the regulators are doing. All three of the regulators have got um, sandboxes. So um, HKMA, the SFC, and Insurance Authority, all um, trying to create an environment to allow new companies to flourish in these fast-moving spaces. And above and beyond that, there's a whole range of wider funding schemes that um, young and growth companies can tap into. Um, and all of those programs can be found on the Start Me Up Hong Kong website, um, which I'll touch on in a little bit more detail in a moment or two. Um, indeed, that program is one run by Invest Hong Kong. I'll get Jane to stand up. Jane actually is the architect of this and the person who knows most of all um, about the starter work. Um, but, but the program is designed not only for international startups, but to help develop the ecosystem in Hong Kong, um, to provide information to companies so they can grow, 
Um, it's facilitation of the really practical stuff. How do you navigate the regulatory environment? How do you get visas? Finding school places, the practical issues that businesses face. Um, also, a whole range of networking opportunities um, and also introductions to people that can help with the issues that you need to tackle, whether it's on tax or legal issues um, and so forth. And then we also can help with the marketing and PR support as the businesses um, begin to grow and flourish. And it is a lifelong commitment from Invest Hong Kong. We're not just about the startup phase. Part of our job is to help companies already here grow. Um, as you all know, it's easier to actually um, work with existing customers than new customers. So what we really want to see is all of you grow, flourish, create more jobs, which increases prosperity of society right here in Hong Kong. So that's just a little bit about the program. We have a big annual festival um, which took place most recently in January this year. The next one is going to take place um, on the 21st to the 25th of January next year. And perhaps now we could just show you a video, a short video, I promise, of what the startup festival looked like this year. Thank you. <laughs> Hong Kong is the most international city in Asia, and that's actually reflected in the startup scene here as well, which is incredibly international. Today I want to talk to you about how we are revolutionizing transportation and how we are going to transform the way that you live, work, and connect. It's very interesting to see all of the different fintechs that are competing in the startup pitch competition as well as the speakers who are sharing their thoughts and perspective in their individual areas of expertise. So it's been a really good event. Winner for this year's fifth uh, finals is Checkbox. <laughs> I think we have got more entrepreneurs, we've got more startups than ever before. I think everybody now realizes just how important this new economy is. So the retail industry working together, collaborating, rather than trying to compete with one another, actually creating new ideas together um, and becoming, I guess, frenemies. It's really, really exciting when government is so progressive uh, and then of course meeting other investors and entrepreneurs in healthcare blockchain with a lot of great ideas. Really exciting times right now. I think the most exciting part about this technology in IoT is the fact that it's a cross convergence of so many different technologies, AI, the blockchain, and how all of those technologies when used and blended together actually create this convergent world. Great, thank you. As I said, so that's going to be running again next year, 21st to 25th of January. So um, do um, set the time aside to join at least some of that program. Now we're going to move on to the sharp.